<laughs> All right, everybody. Today we're talking with Aaron, who loves Ben and Jerry's half-baked ice cream. And his best party trick is that he can instantly locate the family pet. Aaron's worst job was working in tech support, and thankfully he survived. He may be mistaken for a Star Trek Spock and wishes he was from Canada because he loves the food and cold weather. He moved across the country on a whim and has a collection of over, over a thousand DVDs, but today he's sharing with us about a Star Trek cruise. So welcome, Aaron. Hi there, and thanks for having me. Oh, we're super excited. Yeah. So Aaron, the timer is starting, and I okay. want to no, how did you find out about the Star Trek cruise? It sounds so incredibly fun, and I'm not even a, a true Trekkie. So. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to you about that point alone, but I found out about it because I am a big Trekkie. I have been on the convention circuit as long as I can remember. Uh, your typical going to a hotel, going to a convention center, that sort of thing. And I eventually hear that they run a whole boat of these things. Uh, people <laughs> oh get get on board for a whole week and do their thing. And I'm like, it combines two things I love, cruising and convention. So this has to be great. Oh, it and, sounds... And the best thing about it, April, is that if you aren't a huge fan, if you're a surface level fan or don't know anything about it, it's actually going to be just as much fun for you, believe it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds amazing. So tell us where does the cruise go? I mean, you're obviously not out there visiting Romulans and Klingons, right? So where do you go? Do they have theme locations? How does this, how does the cruise work? The ones that we've been going on have left out of Miami and they usually pick different regions throughout the Caribbean. I've heard of a couple other they've arranged throughout the years that I think that that just didn't work out to other locations. So they're working from Miami to that region for the time being. And it does get very thematic. Uh, you have your little, you have activities on the ship, which uh, will be things like writing, uh, baking. Uh, you have panels like you would have at a convention. You will have that on the ship. Costume contests are a big thing. Oh, yeah. Partying and drinking also a big thing <laughs> as well. Really, you just think of anything you might do on a cruise or on at a convention and just magnify it because it's like, that's the best thing about it is that they're just taking what you already like and making it better. Great. Oh my gosh. So tell us about the food. Is it, it sounds like everything's kind of unique and themed and honestly, I've never been on any cruises. So. <laughs> okay. Well, the food, if you haven't been on a cruise, it's one of the best things because it just, it's there anytime you want it. The menus don't really, they, they just have a, you sit down, you order whatever you want. It's, it tends to be themed like the dishes on the show. But it's also just generally really good food as well. There's uh, appetizers that are, you know, thematic. And sometimes uh, we had uh, some of the people, the, the guest stars from the show, the actors oh were playing God. cooks from the show. So they got to have a little extra fun with that. Oh, wow. Um, wow. E Ethan Phillips from Star Trek Voyager, if you know his character, Neelix, he was there. Uh, Nana Visitor, who was on DS9, actually has her own cookbook and got to do a presentation and she did a whole cooking show. Oh Some, oh my and God. that's the thing, exactly. It's like things that you wouldn't expect from just a regular cruise you're gonna get because they're just putting in that much more effort. Wow, wow. So tell us your most memorable moment on one of these. It sounds like you've been on more than one. So can no, you- No, yeah. only one so far. Okay. I'm scheduled for another soon enough. Ooh, cool. uh, really, oh, oh, my most memorable moment, I'm gonna have to say, Honestly, it's the people that you're going to meet there and the feeling of you're actually on a ship with people who you can consider you to be your crewmates. You can mm -hmm. actually get into the idea of having a community there. Uh, um, I've talked to other people who do thematic cruises because it's not just Star Trek. There are theme cruises for country music, jazz music, right. history. Um, and the great thing about it is that unlike a regular cruise, you don't have to introduce yourself to somebody. You walk up to somebody and you immediately know you have something in common with them. You can start a conversation right away. And there are 2,000 people on the ship that that's true. Oh, that's got to be amazing. Because that's like yeah. going to a concert or anything else. Like we all like the same thing. So you have that, yes. you have that one thing, right, that you have, you're in common already. So that's got to mm -hmm. make it beautiful. Yeah, so it I, sounds like you've probably made some friends on, on yes. maybe this experience. So tell us maybe about a special person or you know, some people you've stayed in touch with still, probably from this cruise? 
I will give you a, a shout out to one of my great friends, Jen Baum, her, also known as the Klingon Pop Warrior. She is a person who has torn up the talent show and the karaoke competition <laughs> doing <laughs> pop songs translated into Klingon using full oh my makeup and outfits. Oh my God. Oh my God, that sounds, I, I now need to see it. I, so. <laughs> yes, you do, you really do. Totally. Yeah, we gotta YouTube. go Google that YouTube video. There's mm -hmm, gotta be a mm -hmm. video. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there are many videos. She is on iTunes as well. Uh, very talented lady, very fun lady. But it's it's just one of those things that you you have that thing in common, and it's kind of the only atmosphere where you're gonna be able to pull that off, and people are gonna really get what you're doing. Oh, that is so cool. Um, it is. Yeah, and so I was gonna ask if you would do it again, but it sounds like you're already doing it again. When, when Hopefully. Are you going, when are you going next? Do you have it? The next cruise was scheduled for March of 2021, okay. or it's March, uh, March of 2020, I should say. That was put off for obvious reasons. Right. Uh, so they rescheduled it for March of 2021, and that is still on the books. And I am planning on being on board. Okay. We'll let happens what happens. Okay. Wonderful. And, and how long is the cruise? It's a standard seven-day cruise. Okay. That's amazing. Wonderful. So what would you suggest for someone else who wants to do it? Do you think there's still spots on this upcoming cruise? Yes. Okay. Um, I would say go ahead and actually get in touch with me directly if you could, because if you do, uh, we'll actually both get a little bit of a bonus for signing up as part oh. of an away mission together. I'm your team leader. Uh, oh, cool. and That's yeah, very it's, cool. It's a way of, there are so many people that know each other through the internet even before they get on board here. Uh, we have Facebook groups to keep in touch uh, because there are things like decorating your cabin. Uh, we have contests for that. And that you have to coordinate that ahead of time. You can't just do that while you're there. No, because no, you got to bring supplies. It's a cruise, yes. right? <laughs> you, need your, you need your door measurements so you know how big the decorations can be. Oh, my God. Oh and my cause gosh. Because you, you bring what will fit in that little cabin, right? Because you, mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's so funny that you decorate. And, and do the other like uh, team activities like that all throughout the cruise? You do things as, yep. a, as a group or like as a cabin? Absolutely. Uh, for example, there it was one competition where it, there is a, a life raft making competition <laughs> where you have to make the best life raft you can out of materials that can be found in the cafeteria. Oh, okay. Which boils down to water bottles, silverware, napkins, and I think you're allowed duct tape. But <laughs> yeah, you better be allowed the duct tape, I would think. <laughs> yeah. Or gluing it together with like, you know, oh, there's our, oh. our with <laughs> sticky stuff. That's that is amazing. You know, when you're talking about um, all the games and so it, it's like summer camp, right? You know, it's like you have all these things and you right. do as a team. It just sounds so. Um, like, I, I'm glad that when I asked about the most memorable moment, you said people, because I think that's really what you're doing. You're getting to kind of submerge yourself with like-minded folks, people who share the joy, right, of the same thing. Yeah, I think that's what I get out of it, too. It sounds like you've already got a group of people that you connect with. So it's like meeting, you know, like you said, it takes away some of that, you know, I'm not good with the large groups of people, but yet we'd already have stuff in common, so... And Beautiful. one of my, my favorite event that was there, uh, a, a favorite evening event rather, was a crayon and cocktail night with actress Rekha Sharma from Star Trek Discovery. Oh. And the whole thing was they gave a bunch of people cocktails and crayons and we just talked and had fun and doodled. And it, it was just a great conversation going, the ultimate icebreaker. Oh, that's, that's awesome. great. <laughs> well, that was our seven minutes. So I wanna thank you so much for coming on, Aaron, and sharing your story. And as Aaron said, we'll include in the comments. So if you want to get in touch with him and connect with him and maybe join the Star Trek cruise, um, as always, we put that in the comments and information. So travel with us through real stories from real people. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here. Thank you.